Hiya! Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are in the Citroen once again, and we're going to fit one of these. Are we going to try and fit one of these? Um, I do remember when I did the decat that the bolts that hold the manifold on are a little bit rusty, so hopefully we're not going to snap them and we'll be able to fit this. Now, the idea is, is that we've done all the other modifications, uh, remap and everything else, so this... It should already be sort of set up for. Um, and the idea is, is to see if this makes any difference um, or any noticeable difference. And I suppose check if it's got any value for money because these are about 200 quid. Now I got lucky, I got this one for about 100 quid second hand. But normally they're a couple of hundred quid. So I would see if they are, if the difference that they make is, is worth it really. But first... Before I go and start struggling with rusty, shitty nuts and bolts, I need to go and get a gasket for it. And in the same time as going getting the gasket, I shall do some tests to test my befores. the before test and this is in a manifold gasket um sometimes when people fit these they don't bother changing that which you could probably get away with but for eight quid it's not worth the hassle if it's blowing it sits off and i put it back together and then i have to take it off again so this manifold anyway the point in fitting it because the manifold that we've got on which did used to have a catalyst in it is hollow and effectively sort of free flowing anyway so what is the point in fitting this one well not only is it free flowing as in there's no restrictions there are little to no restrictions the other thing about the manifold is that these are all the same length and the reason for that is when an engine fires and burns you know burns the fuel and puts the exhaust out as it comes out it goes down here like cylinder one two and three and if they're different lengths, they come out at different times. And the idea is, is that they meet one after the other at the collector. So not only does it cause less of an interruption, it also causes something called scavenging. So as one pulse passes the intersection there, the other one's not far behind it in a different pipe and it sort of causes a bit of a Venturi effect. That's the idea anyway. That's a very brief explanation of Lambda Waves lambda waves and um, exhaust manifolds so anyway let's go and fit the shitter and see oh let's go and try and fit the shitter snap a few bolts off and see if it makes any difference and as you can see we have already removed the front bumper so we can get to the area which we need to get to so this is our catalyst or it was once and this is what has to come out to fit our manifold so where does it unbolt from? Well, we've got four bolts holding, holding it to the cylinder head. Well, I said four bolts, there's two nuts and two bolts. So they're bolts under there. There's a nut on a stud and another nut on a stud. Don't fancy them snapping off, but we'll just have to see what happens. We've also got them shitters, which need to come off. And I've got some new bolts to put on there with washers. Um, and I'll uh, reuse the springs. And there's another bracket there which needs to come off as well, which also looks fun. So, might as well start with a shagger. And the ones I want to take off first, I'll try and take off first, are these shitters. Yes. 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 Right, if I have another go, I'm going to liberally apply Pop it, pock, pocket rocket to everywhere which it could be beneficial. Now put enough on, and I'll put some more on. And hopefully, it won't go on fire. 
I think that will do. So as you just witnessed, this one's spinning round and round, so I need to put a spanner on it, but I need both hands to do that. So you just have to use your imagination to watch that bit. Yes. Right, so that bit should release like so. And I'll get the bits that we need, which is we need this gasket and we need them springs. The rest of it we shouldn't need. Right, so the next part that I'm going to remove, I'm going to try and remove, is that 12mm that holds this bracket on, which actually undid surprisingly easily. Let's get that out of the way, put that in a safe location, even though we probably shouldn't need that one again. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do, before I think on, is going to be to unplug this. Like so. Now that's unplugged, we can get back on with undoing our four bolts. So that's one. I'll just crack them all off a little bit first. And that one appears to be very very tight like it feels like it might snap a amount of tightness so a little trick i'm not gonna be able to do it on camera but if you've got a bolt that's very very tight sometimes it actually helps to get it moving in a tightening motion first so you only go a little tiny bit like one degree or something you'll feel it go and then it'll undo usually you'll find out if that's worked in a second affirmative and same again I have to tighten that one up a little bit first as well. Yes. And this one just came undone as normal. So they're all loose now, so I can take them out. My calculations are correct, that should come off now. Yes. And this is our old gasket. There should be a stud in there to hold it in place while we put it back together, but unfortunately, the nut has brought the stud out with it, which isn't a big deal, it just means that I'm gonna have to hold it in place while I put that back in. Anyway, let's compare the two things that we have got. This is a standard catalyst, or it was once, but if we look inside it, I don't know if you can see, the cat ran away, it was chased away by a dog. Um, but still, even though it is just an open piece of pipe, it's still not to any sort of tuned length or anything. You know, like, whereas this one, if you look at it, another thing I'm going to have to do, by the way, is lengthen the wires to this shitter to put in there because it won't reach, but we'll, we'll do that when we come to it. Um, as I explained before, if you look at this one, these are all the same length, so... It is more performance orientated for race car um, sort of things. But before we can get involved in race car activities, we need to put it back together. Which first, there is a build up of shit on here, which I'm going to have to remove using nothing but elbow grease and determination. And something to remember. Um, you know, if you're allocating time for a job like this, you've got to remember that when you've got anything to do with gaskets, you know, like whether it be this or the rocker cover gasket or the water pump which has a gasket, you've got to remember that cleaning up and scraping all the old shit off, you've got to allocate enough time to do it. And it can be the most time consuming part of the job most people i mean in my situation the most time consuming part of this job is filming it so four people four or five people can watch it on youtube but as just mentioned when you're doing this job or any job like this cleaning up is a big chunk of the fucking about that you might have to do and then when you've got it to an acceptable level of cleanliness it's almost time to put it back together. But first, 
Of course I'm going to start with no manifold on it and no lama sensor plugged in. I'm going to try to. Yes. Right, so that's enough of that. Now, this gasket, because one of the studs has not stayed where it's meant to be, that one there, and uh, I can't be bothered going taking the stud out of the nut, I'm just going to use it the easy way and stick a bit of grease on there to um, stick the gasket to the cylinder head whilst I fit the exhaust. There's probably be people saying, oh yeah, you shouldn't do that because the grease burns off and affects your lamb results or whatever. That's what I'm doing. Yes. So it sticks really good. I thought it was going to fall off then. Um, another thing that might be worth doing in the future is if we look at this here, we could port match to the gaskets. And the gaskets are already the same size as the exhaust, I've checked. So we could open up these ports a little bit where they come out into the um, into the into the exhaust. So it's a more smoother transition between head and exhaust. But I'm not doing that today, I'm just gonna put it together. And now I've strategically turned the gasket over so it's the right way around on camera. And I feed this into here and then put it like that and uh, put a bolt in. And now I've put a couple in to stop it from falling off and now I can put the other two in. So let's put these bolts in and then see where that leaves us. So just carefully talk these up to the um, manufacturer specific torque setting. And there's four of them to do. There's four of them we took out, so there's four of them to put back in. Probably not going to film them all, but I'm just going to do the same for that and them two. There. <laughs> and now that is tightened to a satisfactory level. Um, next, there is a hole there for one of them. So I need to take that out and put it in there. And if you had any common sense, I'd have undone that while well, it was fixed to the engine, which would have made it easier. It could be quite tight. <coughs> it's quite tight. Yes. And that brings us to the next issue. The issue being that this wire for this Lamba sensor to this plug isn't long enough. Um, it's about six inches too short. So I need to cut these, but I'm gonna cut them so that they're staggered slightly so that the joints aren't all in exactly the same place. And I didn't have a tripod, so I couldn't film it, but here it is done. Um, as I was saying, the joints, I've just used solder and heat shrink on them and strips of wire that are all the same length. And there's only four wires, but the joints on them are staggered. And that's for two reasons. One, it means that not all the joints are in the same place. And two, it means that when I put the piece of wires on that are all exactly the same length. When I come to the other end, the staggering's the same and then they line up nicely. So, it's time to put that shitter in. And when I've tightened it up, Now, the wire should actually reach the plug. Even though it's wrapped around everything else, but we can plug that in. Yes. And it should work, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where you're supposed to run the wire for the Lambda sensor. It won't fit into the clip there anymore, so I'm just going it there with the wiring for the alternator. Right, so the next thing that we have to contend with is we've got this joint to put that together. And first, I need to put that into there. 
because that's what seals it. And then I need to put these back in. Now on the original one, they go into a nut which is built into it. Now it's not got a built-in nut, so I need to put a nut on the back of them. I was going to change these for some better bolts, but I couldn't find anything suitable and I'm fed up now. So I'm just going to put these shitters back in. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but these have springs on them. And the reason for that is because it's the flexible coupling. So when the engine moves a bit, obviously mine doesn't hardly move at all now, but it's got racing engine mounts or, or a racing engine mount. Um, but when it moves around, the joint has a little bit of movement in it to stop it from cracking stuff. So that's what these springs are for. It doesn't 100% tighten it up, it just tightens it up against the spring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into here and then I'm gonna put nuts on the back of it and tighten it up. A little bit of struggling later, the bolts are in with nuts on the back of them and are ready to be tightened up. Yes, I need to hold it with the spanner. Which managed to get us this far. And then this bolt was stripped. So what I've done with it is I've run an M9 die over it to try and get some thread. And I've put an M9 tap through an M8 bolt. So now when I put it in, it might actually tighten up. And that's probably why. That is never ever gonna seal with that ceiling ring in because the ceiling ring doesn't sit proud of the pipe. So on the original one, it has like a raised piece which butts up against the ceiling ring. But on the new one, it doesn't have that. So that is a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna have to see if I can find Maybe a slightly bigger one to sit proud. And this is what I've managed to find. I'm hoping that this is the solution. Um, I'm gonna pack it out, basically. I'm gonna put another seal behind the seal and then tighten it up so that then there's something to tighten the flange against the seal. So I'm gonna have to get it to hold into place. So I think I'm gonna stick a bit of grease on it, stick it on, hold it in place, and then try and put it back together again. Which gives us something like that. So now if I can get that to tighten up and put my bolts back in, then fingers crossed it might work. And it took many, many forces to push them bolts all the way in with that spacing piece in, but I'm hoping that now it shouldn't sound like it's farting. Yes. Uh, so it seems to have successfully overcome that hurdle. I'm just gonna put a cable tie on here so that doesn't end up getting fucked up. And then I shall put the bumper back on, which I'm not gonna film in this video, but I'll put the bumper back on and then I'll go and try the jitter, see if it's any different. And as we can see, the bumper is now refitted. And also, while I was here, I have um, fixed that because I ripped that fucking about before. So now, it should be the time to um, go and test the shitter. And obviously, I forgot to do a before sound clip. Now, when I did the decat, I didn't actually, there was no difference, you know, with it, with it or without it. There was no difference that I could notice any way. But there is an obvious difference straight away with this. It's not really louder, it's just more, well... It's just significantly more raspy. Like the tuning of an E46 M3, like when I did the exhaust originally. Um, right, let's go and drive the Shagger and see if it's any faster. And so far, normal driving conditions. Doesn't feel much different, but it is a bit louder, which is unfortunate. But let's see if it's any different for our third gear pull.
in all honesty, I can't feel much difference. Now, I have been driving the BM for a few days, and this always feels slow when I get back in it. But the difference, if there is one, isn't that noticeable to me at the moment. Uh, but I will put the side-by-sides at the end for comparison reasons. And what I can tell you is it's definitely louder. And um, so much so that I just got smoked by one of them new hybrid Yaris's. And I couldn't even pretend I wasn't trying. Um, but yeah, so it is a bit noisier. And the Poi Poi Poison Overrun are definitely noisier. So anyway, that, that's it for this one. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual. Uh, check me out on Instagram. Um, and uh, don't forget to check out the uh, the ending where they're going to be side by sides. And uh, I'll see you next time.